In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is August the 12th, Feast of St. Clair. She was tonsured by St. Francis of Assisi. That means all her hair was cut off, her beautiful long hair of a noble woman of Assisi, a young lady, very beautiful she was, and she cut off all her hair for, for a woman, at least a true woman, it's a shame to cut off her hair. It's, it's a sign of complete surrender. And she didn't surrender herself to any Lord or any man, but to Christ himself. <clears throat> she consecrated her whole body and soul to Christ. And this is what the life of a religious is. One consecrates their body, their soul, their intelligence, their will, all their gifts, talents, Everything is given to God, usually under a rule of life approved by the church. In this case of St. Clair, the first Franciscans. And they, 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 the church will approve a rule of life for a given order, and that order produces saints, such as the rule of St. Benedict, written in about the, the late 500s. It is given to God over 10,000 saints who live the rule. More than that, I think it's 20,000 who have lived the rule of St. Benedict. St. Bernard and his family, for example. And then St. Clair, following the Franciscans, Archbishop Lefebvre, he, he had the rule for the Society of St. Pius X, which is a, a very wise rule because it combines a little bit of monastery life, a little bit of st study of the Dominican life, the active apostolate of the Jesuit life, and the Sulpician fathers and other orders, and it combines it into a very balanced and very livable rule to help one grow in the love of God and holiness. So that's, that's what it means to live under obedience obedience to the rule, to the superior of a seminary or a superior of a monastery or a convent, and <clears throat> fighting with the weapons of obedience, one conquers heaven. Of course, obviously, understood when all of the obedience is in, in line with the Catholic faith. If any superior steps out of line of the faith, then we have a duty to disobey. Only then, only then, and so St. Clair, she worked many miracles. She, here's a little description of her life from the Roman breviary. <clears throat> she used to sleep on the bare ground and sometimes on brushwood for a couch and a log of hard wood for a pillow beneath her head. She wore but one undergarment with a cloak of cheap and coarse cloth and often placed a rough hair shirt next to her skin. She, sub she subdued herself with so great an abstinence that for a long period she would take absolutely no nourishment for her body for three days in the week. And on the other days she restricted herself to such a small quantity of food that the other sisters marveled how she was able to support life. She kept fast before her health gave way of two 40-day periods every year refreshed by bread and water alone. So again, I say the saints can do sometimes some really heavy penances because God gives them that grace and inspiration. But again, all saints are to be admired, not always imitated. Moreover, she gave herself constantly to vigils and to prayer. And in these exercises, she would chiefly spend her days and nights she was affected with many ailments of long duration, and when she could not raise herself of her own accord for bodily labors, she was lifted up by the assistance of the sisters and with supports placed at her back. She worked with her own hands lest she should be idle even in her infirmities. She was an eminent lover of poverty from which she never departed in any need whatsoever and she very firmly refused the estates offered by Gre Pope Gregory the Ninth for the support of the sisters. 
The greatness of her sanctity was manifested by many and various miracles. So now here's a list of the miracles she did. She restored the power of someone who could not speak to one of the sisters of her monastery. She restored the hearing to the deaf ears of another. She healed one sick of a fever, one who was swollen with dropsy, one stricken with a, another disease called fistula, and others afflicted with various ailments. She cured them. She cured a violent insanity, one of the brothers of the orders of minors, the Franciscans. Once when all the oil in the monastery was spent, St. Clair took a pitcher and washed it and it was found filled with oil by the divine generosity. She multiplied half a loaf of bread to such a degree that it was enough for 50 sisters. When the Saracen, the Muslims, besieged and attacked the town of Assisi and they attempted to break into St. Clair's monastery, she, though sick at the time, had herself carried to the gate and also the vessel which contained the Most Holy Eucharist, the monstrance. And there she prayed, saying, O Lord, deliver not unto beasts the souls of those who confess thee, but preserve thy handmaids, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. And after this prayer, she heard these words, I will always preserve you. And some of the Muslims took to flight. Others who had scaled the walls were struck blind and fell down headlong. Another account was St. Saint, Saint Clair, when she was sick, she went to the chapel, she got better. And she went to the chapel at Christmas night at midnight. And she went to the altar and Our Lady appeared to her and gave her to hold the child Jesus the very baby Jesus in her arms and she was fully recovered. So our Lord loved his St. Clair and today her body is incorrupt. You could go to Assisi and see her incorrupt body and her habit. At length when the Virgin St. Clair was approaching her end she was visited by a white-robed multitude of blessed virgins from heaven among whom there was seen one more eminent and more resplendent than the rest. And having received the Holy Eucharist and an indulgence for sins from Pope Innocent IV, she gave up her soul to God on the 3rd of the Ides of August, that's August 11th, yesterday. And as after her death she became celebrated by numbers of miracles, Pope Alexander IV enrolled her among the Holy Virgins. So you saw St. Clair painted on the walls, many paintings of her throughout these Franciscan missions here in California. And today we're going to see the very mission of Carmel, the very mission where Father Sarah is buried. And it's also the mission that holds the statue he brought from Spain, Our Lady of Bethlehem. So it's a very beautiful statue. So we'll go there to pray today. And this is the day you want to make uh, great requests, ask God great things uh, through the humble servant, Father Junipero Serra. Ask great things through Our Lady and through Father Junipero Serra. Ask great things. With God, ask great things. Great things to become saints, to do God's will in your life, to love Him above all things. Those are the, those are the great things to ask. And then all the virtues, a greater faith, in this fight for the faith of today when the faith is being smashed even by Pope Francis and these modernist bishops who are trying now more than ever to crush the Tridentine Mass and crush Catholic seminaries of tradition. They're really trying hard. And one of the things they have to do is get the superiors, get the leaders of any traditional congregation to accept Vatican II in the new Mass, even a little bit. And once they do that, it's like putting your finger in the chipper. You ever seen a chipper? It's the machine where they just take a huge branch, 15 feet long, and just touch it into the chipper. And once it gets a grip of the first branches, it's, it just devours, violently devours the whole thing. So within seconds, 
it swallows the whole branch and turns it into sawdust or wood chips. That's what modernism does when you play with that devil. You put your finger in that cage of modernism, you get sucked in and you get chewed up and devoured. And that's why we can never, as Archbishop Lefebvre said, we can never accept Vatican II and its errors and the new mass and all the new reforms in the name of Vatican II because it will mean the death of the Catholic faith. It's the chipper that will devour and destroy all of us. So that's why the Catholic resistance, that's why the priests throughout the world who are opposing this liberalism in the new SSPX, when Bishop Fillet decided 10 years ago to put his finger in the chipper and get chewed up. And now they are getting chewed up. And the chewing up is working with these modernist bishops and getting their marriages approved, the confessions approved, all these things which might sound good and they're, they're good in normal times, but these are not normal times. Rome has not co come back to the faith. And Archbishop Lefebvre warned his priests and his bishops, do not seek any deal with Rome, do not seek any agreement with Rome until Rome comes back to Catholic tradition. That's our fight. The defense of Christ the King, the defense of the Holy Mass, the faith of all time. But we have no, you and I don't have a right to throw mud on the altar. We don't have a right to smear mud of Vatican II and its errors and new mass into the chalice. We have no right to spit on our Lord. And that's what the Vatican II compromises do. Cardinal Rocha said a liberal Catholic is a Freemason minus the apron. And a liberal Catholic is one who accepts the principles of Freemasonry, such as separation of church and state, freedom of the press, freedom of the speech, freedom of conscience to believe what I want and publicly practice what I want. What's wrong with that is it allows all false religions to spread and many souls get sucked in and lose their soul. And the practical application of freedom of conscience, which was condemned by the syllabus of Pope Pius IX, that principle of freedom of conscience means if I want to have, get abortion, I can get abortions. If I want to live like a rainbow creep, I can live like a rainbow creep. And if I want to, you can do what you want as long as you don't cause disturbance to the civil order. And that's condemned by common sense, by the natural law, by the divine law, and by the great popes of tradition. And yet Vatican II praises freedom of conscience as the great goddess of the modern world. And it's false. So only Christ has rights because only Christ is God. He's the only God that, be, the only Son of God in union with the Father and the Holy Ghost, equal to the Father and the Holy Ghost from all eternity. Only He became man. Only He died on the cross. And He established His church. He spoke often of my sheepfold, the field of wheat and weeds, the catch of fish, all these references to his church, his holy Roman Catholic Church that he bought with his blood on the cross. And we profess this Roman Catholic faith of all time. And we have to pray to St. Clair to be faithful. She opposed heresy and error, and she knew the Muslims were going to come and sack the convent and rape the nuns, strip them and rape them. This is what they do. So she prayed to our Lord, and our Lord said, I will always protect you. Because St. Clair, like St. Teresa, like St. Gertrude, St. Teresa Margaret of the Sacred Heart, St. Veronica Giuliani, St. Teresa of Avila, our Lord loves his brides who give everything to him. He told St. Teresa, look after my affairs, and I will look after yours. Did you ever think of that? Look after the glory of God. Look after his love and kingship and giving your whole heart and mind and soul to him and he'll take care of everything else. He does. So be daring with our Lord like this. Be daring with him. Give him everything, all your love, your first intentions, and he will take care of everything else. So put all in his hands like St. Clair did. And let's beg the Mother of God for a great generosity to our Lord. And today you're going to kneel before St. Father Sarah's tomb. You're going to kneel before the statue of Our Lady of Bethlehem. Ask them great graces to become saints, 
to love God with all your heart in whatever state of life you are in. If you're married and you got a business, you still must love God with all your heart. And I know good businessmen who have, who have big families and they consecrated their business to the Sacred Heart. They got a crucifix and a Sacred Heart of Jesus in their main office, right in their main office. So God will bless that. We want to consecrate everything to the Sacred Heart and the Sacred Heart of Jesus said, I will bless all, the, all your undertakings when you consecrate anything to me. I will bless it all. So ask our Lord a great generosity with him. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. And for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.